Hey, Lorenzo here. Episode 32 of KSP Next, where we again go to the moon, but this time with a nuclear rocket. So the title is Nuclear Moon. There you go. This is the launcher. It's an updated Saturn V derivative. It's got seven F1 engines, six in a ring, one in the center. And on top of that is the second nuclear stage that will take the beefed up lander all the way to the moon. As you can see the thruster weight is uh, 1.001 um, in any next iterations of this launcher uh, we will have to do some strap on boosters. It appears to go faster now but that's because we fast forwarded the video. Um, we're bringing, as I uh, started to say, two Kerbals to the moon this time. Um, this mission will be slightly more Apollo-esque, apart from the nuclear engine, of course, uh, in that one of them will remain in orbit, uh, whilst the other one will go for a landing. Uh, other differences of this mission include uh, the previously mentioned beefed-up lander. It's got four uh, traditional descent engine uh, module engines and a homebrew ascent engine. Here we go. Starting up the nuclear drive. It takes a while, and as you can see, it is... Um, well, as an engine, it's fairly strong. It's about 800 kilonewtons, if I recall correctly. But, you know, there's a quite a beefy big rocket on top of it still. So the acceleration at this point is really, really low. There's no, It's no accident that I launched uh, it to an apoapsis of about 1,200 kilometers with the first stage. And um, let me just mention that this is still 10 times accelerated. Um, we do need all this time to get up to orbital speed with this nuclear rocket. Um, in retrospect, I think maybe it would have been better to have like a three-stage design with like a second uh, hydrolox powered stage and then the nuclear rocket. But the problem is the nuclear engine itself weighs more than 10 tons. Uh, so you're kind of stuck with using a really big rocket with it to get uh, any benefit of the increased specific impulse. Because if you make a small tank, the the engine will basically be more than half your dry mass, and then uh, you don't get any more delta V than you would with a conventional but lighter engine. Anyway, we are uh, just about in orbit. Just made it. And... Uh, uh, the screen turning dark, I can talk about uh, Beef the Blander. Four descent engines, 35 tons in total, so this nuclear stage will deliver 35 tons in to a circular lunar orbit, low lunar orbit, and uh, then still have fuel to spare to uh, take a capsule home. So that's, that's really good performance. What I'm hoping out of the larger lander, uh, so we're not bringing any rovers or anything, we're just bringing more fuel, is that we can do two landings at, I at once. So land, take some samples, take off, fly to a different bit of the moon, land again, take more samples, and then meet up with the ship. Um, in the background here, the various stages of the mission are passing by. Um, if you want a more in-depth look at the transfer courses to the moon, a look at the previous episodes that went to the moon, this basically looks exactly the same. Uh, we are now, if I recall correctly, at the lunar sphere of influence, uh, where we are uh, have just braked into into an orbit. There we are. We're at 47 kilometers by 1,200 kilometers, and just now starting up again the nuclear engine. It has limited ignitions, but it is limited to 60, so that's not a problem. Um, as you can see, it, it takes quite a while to ramp up, up but it also um, throttles down very low, so that um, makes it perfectly viable to use for steering. Uh, we're expending a few delta Vs turning the rocket around this way, but it's much easier than using RCS propellant with a uh, heavy rocket like this. If you look in the top left, you can see that the total mass of the rocket is still about 75 tons, so it's, uh, it's a beastie for sure. What we're going to do, I previously mentioned it already, is slow down into a low lunar orbit, circular at about 50 kilometers, a little bit less, and then detach the lander to, uh, well, to touch down on the surface and get those samples. Here we are throttling up the nuke to full power, and uh, well, the, v the vessel is slightly getting lighter. Uh, the accelerations aren't taking as long as before, but still, you know, fairly long. Here we are in not quite a circular orbit, but. Uh, Definitely a low orbit, detaching the lander, and as you can see, it's got a well, it's thrusting in the wrong direction for one. Uh, let's uh, quickly rejigger the controls, and there we are uh, separating from the the mother stage. We have a nice engine on top of it. Um, I I like the design of this thing. 
we've got four big descent engines on the bottom, a small ascent engine on the top, and that means, of course, the thing has to break into and do a little pirouette, well, not a pirouette, a somersault, before actually ascending, but I'm sure that will be fine. For now, we are using our RCS propellant to separate from the nuclear return stage. You can see the three-man capsule on top of that, and that should give some perspective to how big this nuclear stage actually is. It's almost ridiculous, but, you know, it gets the job done, so why complain? Here we are firing the four engines. Now, the complication with these engines is that they have three relights, uh, three ignitions, so two relights. Um, if we want to do multiple hops, we can't use all four engines because we use one ignition for the descent, another one for the ascent, another one for the descent, and yeah, actually that could work because then we have the ascent engine to, to take us home again. But that assumes that all burns happen um, perfectly in one go. So, but what we can do is, of course, it's a four-engine cluster. We can disable two and then, then uh, conserve some ignitions. Here we are approaching the lunar surface. The video has been accelerated again, obviously. Uh, here we're coming in for the landing, going back to normal speed. And I'm running into a slight thrust-to-weight issue at this point. I already mentioned uh, shutting down two of the four engines. It turns out that that's actually mandatory now because the four engines won't throttle down low enough to actually uh, keep descending towards the surface. I'm going to do it um, fairly haphazardly because I don't want to shut them off and then light them again because, you know, that costs an ignition. So I'm turning off one and then the other. Uh, maybe I should learn how to use the engine controller mod because this is uh, playing havoc with my descent. We're uh, wasting valuable delta V here. And um, fortunately, we're still uh, about two kilometers from the surface. So didn't quite nail the suicide burn here, but we're, we're wasting fuel so that we may conserve ignitions. Because in, in regular old KSP, just shut down the engines and light them back up. Of course, in this scenario, if we would do it, it's also possible that we'd have to expend some more time to do an ellage burn again. And then um, if that takes longer than, than uh, expected, we might just crash into the surface. Anyway, a little bit forward, because we were still two kilometers up, that would be taking a while. 100 meters now, two engines do throttle down low enough to, to descend, but only just so. So when the ship is a little bit lighter for the next landing, we're going to have to take this into account. For now though, we're at 70-ish meters, descending at less than 5 meters per second. So everything at least is under control, and that's always good when you're landing on the moon with... Uh, Actually, no hope of rescue. Of course, the the other Kerbal in the in the nuclear stage is still close, but there's really nothing he can do if the if the landing itself fails. That's Jebediah. Actually, we've got Valentina here about to touch down on the surface. Very nice and controlled. And well, she should cut the engine at any time now. There we go. Cut the engine. Land. Boom. We're landed on the moon for the second time. Actually, the third time, but the first time was uh, unmanned. We're climbing out upside down because of course the ascent stage is upside down walking around on the surface didn't bring a flag so no flag planting and got the samples back inside here we go lift off uh, we're gonna do the plan I said before we're using two engines now conserving ignitions and we're going to boost into a suborbital trajectory the ladder is still extended fortunately they there's no atmosphere to shear that off and I'm going to have a look at the delta V meter this stage currently has about 1500 delta v left so i want to not i want to spend less than half of that on my on my my uh, transfer burn because otherwise i'm sure as hell won't have enough to descend skip forward we're uh, descending now we're at uh, 13 ish kilometers we have l quite a tight amount of delta v if you look at the speedometer we're at uh, 300 ish meters per second no, actually, I'm misreading that 50-ish meters per second and 150-ish meters per second left should be good. But look at that. We're still at 2 kilometers altitude. Our vertical speed is minus 45. So in the we, we definitely need that amount of delta V. And our, the delta V still in our tanks has just dropped under 60. So that's a very small margin. Um, considering we're still 2 kilometers up, we are never, ever going to make that. And old me is just about to realize this. So we're going to see um, a land abort attempt here. Any time now we're going to uh, cut the engines or they're going to run out of fuel actually. They're out of fuel. 
and now we're just crashing to the surface. So it's time to to activate the ascent module. First, of course, get some science because you know we've got all the time in the world. We're only crashing to the lunar surface. Don't worry about it. Anyway, ignite the boosters that separate the ascent stage, but you know we're still upside down, and these boosters are strong enough for uh, separation, but we're still heading towards the surface. So let's enable the RCS propellants, turn it around, make sure the engine has the fuel settled at the bottom 600 meters ago, light the engine and let's uh, let's get out of here. We are currently still descending but we're slowing down. It's 500-ish meters and now we're going up again. So land ab landing abort attempt successful. We live. Slight complication is that because of this abort attempt, we had, of course, no um, planning at all in, la in launching in a nice moment to rendezvous with uh, our mother stage. But, of course, Valentina is a capable carbonaut, and she can just make that happen. Of course, it also helps that the ascent module that I built has more than 2.5 kilometers per second of delta V, which is quite a bit more than you need, so that's, uh, that's good. The engine for this uh, that I use for this, the uh, Apollo Ascent module, I'll look at that, Earthrise. The Apollo Ascent module doesn't have a plume configured for it, but uh, let me assure you it is on. Here I am plotting the intercept, working out fairly nicely, and we are going to enter a little bit of time acceleration again. There is enough food and water inside uh, this module to sustain Valentina for uh, at least a day or two, so these um, this one and a half orbit that it's going to require to meet up is no problem at all. Time warping forward, we are meeting up with the stage here, fiddly fiddly fiddly. There we go, you can see the reticule um, against the lunar surface. And we're still about 20-ish kilometers away, but our intercept is already set, so we're just going to wait until we drift closer to that. This is all 10 times accelerated, by the way. This, uh, these are patience requiring moments. This is in-game time acceleration with the video 10 times accelerated as well. So everything is nice and snappy. There we go, we have the nuclear moon command stage floating just two kilometers away from us. You can see the two shadows on the lunar surface closing. I started that for a good five minutes. And here we go with the RCS propellants uh, almost expended actually. We are just about there. We don't dock because the docking is for losers. We jet back over to our ride home. This time making sure to grab the science from the module. Unfortunately just the one sample, uh, just the one surface sample, not two of them. Um, I think if we didn't have the the hovering and the the engine disabling at, at two kilometers during the first launch and we're a little bit more conservative with the hop that we did we probably could have done it in fact I'm sure of it because of course if you have a little bit more Delta V everything works out here we go approaching the command stage being careful not to hit the solar panels actually the nuclear stage generates quite a bit of electricity but it turned out in simulations that it was just not enough to uh, run the tank insulators and uh, coolers and all the assorted flight hardware, so I added a few solar panels anyway. Trying to find the hatch. Jebediah is being a bit mopey, he's not helping out by rotating the ship. He's just saying, you figure it out, you've got your jetpack, everything should be fine. Anyway, there's the hatch. No problems whatsoever in approaching that. We uh, Well, Valentina has done that several times already, so she's really good at that. Anyway, we're going inside, we are leaving the moon, we've got all the delta V we need, over 2 kilometers per second, and there we are, back at Earth, skipped through all that, um, all that tedium. Now, here we are, separating the command module, boom, explosion, my heart sank, because this whole mission was, apart from the landing aboard, incredibly according to plan, but the decouplers were staged in the wrong order and one of them exploded. Fortunately, nothing else happened with that. Here we are descending into the Earth's atmosphere against a sunset. We are uh, disagreeing with the daytime and racing into the night on a ball of fire. So that's uh, that's always spectacular. Everything's under control here as well. We're pulling about 8 Gs. That's perfectly manageable for our plucky carbonauts. 
and the heat shield is holding, the capsule is perfectly intact, there's plenty of food and water still inside, so everything is copacetic. Here in the last 100 meters, we are uh, parachuting down into the ocean again, well and truly at night, because we raced around the sunset and landed at night. That's it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to look at the space station I built and have a quick look at a nuclear probe to Uranus. Ha ha ha, yeah, you're allowed to laugh about that one. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend. See you later. Goodbye.